how to forecast new products like this one. This is not easy and if you do it wrong, it's gonna cost a lot in terms of overstock, stock out and stress. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you the 19 steps you need to master if you really want to improve the forecast accuracy of new products for permanent products, but also fast fashion products. So is it possible to forecast accurately new products? This is one of the challenge of my uh, professional life. But before that, we have very different types of new products. We have what we will call new variation and we have innovation products, which is very, very different. When we talk about innovative product, they can be very, very like disruptive for the industry and there is nothing to compare. We're going to talk about how to forecast this product at the end of this video. But before that, we have like what we call typology of products with life cycle. We have the permanent ones that will stay maybe for two or three years uh, in your company available. And you have the collection one, the fast fashion uh, collection and new products that need to change all the time. And this one are much more challenging to, to forecast. So we're going to start forecasting similar products to 19 steps. I'm going to go very deep. And this is an overview of my full course forecasting expert. And I'm using in this course uh, the example of a bicycle company uh, with the product manager Elon Musk. So for example, we have this morning bike, we have the current version and this is the new version. You can see it's very similar and this is a permanent product. We're going to have these products for many years in the company. And then we're going to forecast fast fashion and uh, these similar products from a collection. We have the last summer collection, it's a t-shirt, a blue one, and then we have the pink one for the new version for next summer. You can see they are different, but they look similar. They have the same style and that's what we're going to forecast. So what is the first step? The first step is to plan ahead, to have a real planning. And I can tell you, I've been forecasting new products for the last 15 years. And most of the times we are late. We are late. We are not very clear about who is responsible for what, what is the full lead time from the design, the SNOP review, the, what we call the sales and operation planning, and the factory and supply review, and all the lead time for the supplier. And most of the time we are running to, we, we see we have time and at the end, oh, we need to share with the, the manufacturing, with the components. And at the end we are running and we are uh, doing everything like a firefighter. So it's very important in your company to be very clear all the different steps from the ideas to the launch of your products what are the total lead time and what is the deadline to launch the forecast to the production to make sure you will have a smooth launch for your new products. The second one, very important one as well, you need to standardize and centralize all the data related to the new products. Most of the time, it's a mess. I can tell you, you have Excel, email, it's everywhere. Everyone is using a different spreadsheet or tool with a different style for the cost, for the price, for, for all the information of the products. And when I became, for example, a supply chain manager or SNOP manager, what I was doing first is was like, guys, let's define one template, one Excel, very simple. This is one, uh, one of the examples I share in my forecasting expert course. I just, like, we just designed a very simple template with pictures, with all the information we need, with all the formula we need to define also the, the forecast. And everyone has to use the same template. It's in the same shared drive. We all have access and we're going to train everyone, not only the current one, but all the new person joining the company as well. This is critical that you really do that. If not, it's going to be everywhere and it's going to, you're going to go back to the same problem uh, with your planning. So trust me, keep it simple and uh, standardized as much as you can. Then you need to be very clear on the responsibilities. Who is responsible for what in the launch and the success of the launch of this new product. So you have to become the facilitator to make sure that everyone is on the same page. This is an example of a board of directors we use in our, in our course uh, between the sales, marketing, logistics, production, manufacturing, and finance. Who is responsible for what? And I can tell you if you ask me who, but I don't know. For me, it should be the person who knows better the market and the product, especially for the forecast. It's not necessarily the, the sales, it could be the the market leader, it could be the supply planner and the demand planner. Uh, but at the end, it should be the person with more information. And one person could supply one specific information. For example, how many clients are going to take my products? And another one could supply, for example, oh, what would be the seasonality of my products? So you need really to make everyone on the same page. And once you have that, then you need to define what are the attributes of my products that I can compare. What are the specifications I can really compare to find what are the most similar products? 
So for example, it could be the type of product like mountain bike for, for men. It could be the size, it could be the, the style, the color, the price, the season, is it winter or summer? And the typology, is it permanent? Is it collection or fast fashion? So this is very important. If you want to compare products to be very clear, what are the main attributes? You can do the same for fast fashion uh, with the like, women's shirt size medium, logo in the front, for example, pink, and the price, and this is a summer collection for this specific one. Then once you have the attributes, you can find the most comparable products. So we have these two examples, you say, okay, this one is very similar to this one, great. I found my, my, my perfect match. And for my fast fashion, I'm gonna take the blue one is similar to the pink, pink one. So we're gonna take these two uh, comparison. We have these comparable products. What you can also do, maybe you don't have it in your company. You can also check on the market. It could be market study, competitors, trends. Maybe you have a, a product that your competitor is um, already have on the market. So have a look, check also the influencers, what, they, what are the new trendy colors, go to conferences, and maybe also check online. You can uh, use, for example, uh, uh, Google Trends to see that, oh, there is more volume for blue mountain bike than red mountain bike plus 16%. Uh, so if you want to know more about these tools, let me know in the comments and I might do a, a special uh, video for you. Uh, we, you can also do market search with a very advanced tool. This one is a paid one. But at the end, the more you will have data, the more you will be able to focus. Okay. Uh, so once you have this information outside the company, you can uh, also check the information inside the company uh, with the attributes from uh, your similar products. So for example, we have this blue, you can say, oh, what is the monthly average per, could be total or per site if you have different, for example, stores or different country. Uh, then you can take the, what is the average price after promotion? Be careful of the promotions, how many size, the colors and the, the year of the collection. And we can see that we have two products and this one uh, looks more similar in terms of price, in terms of size. And at the end, uh, we will probably take this one uh, to compare to this one uh, with, we have, we have a bit of inflation, uh, but at the end, this is a similar product. Okay, that's the same for the, the, the collection one with the, the t-shirt. We have different products and we may pick the blue one because this one are a bit different or they have different size and they have also the same price. Okay, so the more you, you will do it, don't forget to have also pictures uh, to help you to compare. It's very important that everyone can feel it. And once you have the, the, the set the similar products, you can start thinking and forecasting the baseline. So the baseline of this one, you say, okay, 50, I'm going to go back to the same trend. I'm going to use 50, uh, 50 to 70. I don't know exactly because uh, it looks like the red is selling more than the blue. Uh, so we're going to be a, a bit more, but m much less than the black one, which is uh, the classic one. And for my uh, uh, collection, you can say, okay, uh, we are, we know that the pink is selling less than the blue uh, based on the, the, the last research we did. So we're going to do from 70 to 130 uh, quantity uh, per month. And that's what we're going to use for, for the forecast. Then the next step is to be very careful because the forecast of the launch, the, the first month or week, can be very different from the, the next ones. Usually you have a big peak at the beginning because or you have the new, uh, new wow effect for the consumers or if you are selling to distributors, they're going to buy a lot at the beginning and then they go, the, the sale will crash because they have too much inventory and then they will go back to normal. So for example, if you take 60, that could be much more at the beginning and much less just after. So you have to check comparable products to see what happened in my previous launch. And for example, for this one, it could be plus 50. So it could be uh, in this case, 90 at the beginning and less minus 20%. So it will be uh, 48 quantities. Okay. We can do the same for this one. You can see, oh, for fast fashion, the launch is much stronger, plus 200%, then minus 50%. And you can also ask to your consumers, what is, uh, what is the typical launch if you never done that uh, before? Okay. Now we have these numbers and you can apply it 90, 48, and then the baseline. Same for this one. And this one has a different, um, only six months of uh, life cycle. And now you have, you start to have a, like a decent forecast. What is missing in this forecast? You can see this is quite flat, but in reality, we're selling more mountain bike in uh, summer than winter in America. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna include the seasonality. And I'm talking about this in uh, multiple uh, videos in the, on this channel. Uh, so have a look, you have the level, you have the trend and you have the seasonality to have your, your baseline forecast. 
And what we're going to do, we're going to apply this seasonality and we can see that we have more sales in summer than winter. So we're going to change this. You can check my full tutorial uh, on uh, YouTube. You have a full Excel as well that you can download if you want to go deeper on this topic. So now we have we have this forecast spread by months with seasonality, which is great. And then when you have the forecast, don't forget to check with supply chain and um, the minimum order quantity impact. What, what is that? This is the minimum order. For example, you want one quantity, you want 100 quantities, but your suppliers or your manufacturer will say, you know what? No, the minimum you have to buy is 500 quantities. And I've seen so many overstock because of that. Your forecast is great, but you have a minimum order quantity, which is crazy. And this, in this specific example, I want 100 quantities. I will get 500 minimum, so I will have five years of inventory. So you should always double check the inventory turnover of your MOQ before confirming any new launch of products. And once you have all this information, then you can check and approve with all the stakeholders uh, on the launch of sales, marketing, finance, maybe the CEO to make sure that we are all on the same page because the information can change a lot from the ID to the execution of the ID and you have to make sure that everyone approved the risk and the opportunity of this new launch. Once you have the forecast and everyone is okay, you can upload the forecast into your forecasting tool or software or Excel. Uh, this is more an example of a, a forecasting file we develop with my students. Whatever this is ERP system or Excel, make sure this is all in the same place with all the information you need. Uh, then, if possible, try to adjust the cannibalization. When you have a new product, this new product will affect the other ones, unless you do you just clean the, the inventory before. This is not an easy topic, so maybe if you have questions on on uh, YouTube, let us know and we will try to uh, to reply to it. But you uh, you will have to adjust, if possible, uh, the impact of this new one, or maybe your system is doing it automatically. So now we have almost all the information we need, but something very important is you should review all this planning of the launch, not only at the beginning and at the end, but in between to make sure that there is not big change. For example, maybe the, the price is completely different or the lead time of the supply is different. So you have to make sure every month or every two months with your SNOP review meetings, uh, you make sure that you are always on the same page and you have all the up-to-date information before the launch and the success of the product. And at the end, you launch the product, congratulations, but don't forget to quickly review the forecast and the sales because most of the time we launch a product and we forget about it, we go to the next one. And we don't review if there is enough inventory, if the forecast is good enough. And because of that, or we have way too much inventory for years, or we have out of stock in a very short time. And don't forget to track the forecast accuracy. You can check my other a YouTube tutorial if you want to know more how to track your forecast accuracy and make sure you are you can really adjust very quickly not only once but multiple times make sure as well that there is no bullwhip effect or you really see the reality for example I was selling like cosmetics to supermarkets but I was not selling to the consumers directly so the supermarket were buying a lot of products but I, I didn't know if it was really working so I had to ask to my retailers or to pay to have the information to make sure if my products were selling or not because it was just one big, big order from the, the distributor but I didn't know how was the, the success of my product. So be careful of the bullwhip effect. I'm going to get back to this if you have more questions uh, but make sure you always check from the source of your sales. And at the end, you made it. Congratulations. So now you have to collect data to make sure you can repeat uh, this process and make it even more efficient and smooth for the next one. So congratulations, but don't forget to learn from all your learnings and all your mistakes. Okay, so I gave you 19 steps to forecast similar products, but now let's talk about how to forecast innovative products where you don't have any similar products to compare to have any data like these products. What is this? I have no idea how to forecast that. So the first option is the crystal ball. I don't have one, but uh, <laughs> you, maybe you can use your intuition. Uh, but if you, you don't have a crystal ball, you, there is always a way. It won't be perfect, but there is always a way. If I go back to, for example, Apple uh, with the Vision Pro, uh, of course, it's a completely new product. So what, what are they doing? They do market research, but they also do 
waiting list or they do this kind of uh, layer. Yeah, just leave your email. You need to track the interest. It could be like a waiting list. It could be as well the number of views. If you have any social media, you can see, wow, there is 56 million views for the Vision Pro. And it looks like we have a, a stronger interest. Maybe you can publish on your network on your social media and see if you have more engagement from your community. Maybe you can send an email to your customers if you are B2B, business to business, to see if there is a lot of people replying to say, hey, I really want this product. You can also, the best is to test before. So you're going to ship products to maybe one or two stores very quickly. I was doing that with one of my clients. And you just put it in the store, you just don't say anything and you just see if you have, what is your average sales per store, for example, or per client, you can do it for one region, for one country. For example, if your manufacturing is in China, maybe you can try with the Chinese market first before trying in America. But the more you will have information before, the easier it will be. You can also do pre-order like the Cybertruck from uh, Tesla and people have to pay before $100, 10%, 20% to make sure you have that. But you know what? The best way, you don't need to be perfect if you have, for example, short lead time. If you have a very short lead time, like one week, two weeks, it's okay to be out of stock. The, the challenge is really if you have six months or 12 months lead time, and then yes, you need to take a, a bet, you need to uh, take some risk regarding your forecast. But I really encourage you maybe to try to simplify and reduce your lead time. For example, the Zara, Zara company is a very good example. They have four weeks um, like production lead time from um, ID, the IDs to the, the shelf. So try to really simplify as well the way you work. Maybe also accept shortages. This is okay to be out of stock for a new product. This is good news because your products, your clients love the products. Like Apple, for example, every year when you want to buy a new iPhone or a new uh, iPad, whatever, there is out of stock. They are playing with that. And it's good also to create stimulation and make sure you don't have too much inventory after. So you should accept the shortages and work on probability and level of uncertainty. Uh, this is just an example, but if you have a very low profitable product, you should maybe not have as much as a very like profitable one or with a lot of cash flow inside. So we, I'm talking about this with the X, Y, Z method. But of course, if you want to go deeper, I won't have time today. Uh, have a look, but I will not have the same service target between this one, which is very predictable, and this one. I don't know how it's going to be, and you should also check the profit. So have a look on my AB6YZ analysis tutorial if you want to know more about how to uh, classify uncertainty. But my final conclusion on how to deal with new products forecasts is to simplify. To simplify the new product launch, you are probably in this situation today if you watch this video that it's very complicated. You have a lot of pressure, you have a lot of uh, products all the time, and it's very difficult to analyze data. And I really recommend to simplify, simplify all the time. You do less, but you do it better. You do maybe less products, you launch less product, but you do it in a more like focused way, not only for the production, but for the supply chain, but also for the communication and the marketing. Uh, I know the best company in the world, they do it great at the right time. And after that, they rest and they prepare for the next uh, big one. So have a look on this and try to have more this mindset. It's going to be much more relaxed and efficient for you, for your level of stress and for your company. And I'm going to conclude with Apple one more time. <laughs> if you look at the last launch of Apple uh, with uh, Steve Jobs uh, at the beginning, they are almost always launching their new iPhone the same day. It's always the, between the, the 10, the 9, the 10, and the 12th of September every year. And they make it like it's new, it's amazing, but it's so consistent and so simple. They don't have any products and they are so precise. So it's so easy when you analyze data because it's always the same week every year that they're going to launch a new iPhone and it's going to be much easier for all the company for the execution. So my conclusion is keep it consistent and simple. Yes, you can improve your forecasts of the new products, but you can also simplify the way you launch them to simplify your life and have better accuracy and performance for your company. All right, so I hope now you are ready to forecast new products. Let us know in the comments if you have any specific questions to forecast your products from your specific industry. And don't forget to check our new tools and methods free to help you to improve your forecast, your inventory management and your supply chain.